Hi everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of Object Oriented Design Patterns, we're going to talk about a factory. And not just a factory, one that's implemented using the creation of the design pattern we saw last time, which was singletons. So as a quick refresher, a singleton is a design strategy where we make sure that there's only ever one instance of a particular class. Now, uh, that's a very common way that we implement uh, factories as well, so uh, we'll implement our factory as a singleton. So uh, what is a factory or why do we care about factories or would want to use factories? Now we want to use factories because we like to strip away, uh, say from the client, we like to strip away how an object is created and have the client use a you know unified interface for interacting with objects. And we'll see that on our example where we'll have uh, an abstract class with a couple uh, concrete class um, implementations that uh, we use the factory to create these different uh, concrete implementations. So we'll have an implementation one and an implementation two. However, the client that's actually requesting these, which will just be our main function, it only ever sees the abstract class type and it doesn't have to worry about how the object is created. So the main function itself doesn't call new on say product one. It only set requests from the product factory, create a new object of this type. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. So we'll go ahead and open up factory.cpp. So we'll start out talking about our base class, uh, which is our abstract class called product. Now product just has a simple, uh, it has a simple virtual function called print product that will be implemented in these two uh, concrete classes. So product one will implement print product to just say hello from product one. And likewise, product two will just say hello from product two. Not particularly complex, but it gets the point across. And then we get into our singleton implementation of a factory. So it's a singleton because it has a private constructor. And we make sure using this uh, product factory instance uh, and this, uh, this get instance to make sure that there's only ever one instance of uh, the factory itself. Now within the factory, what we have is a create product method. So this create product method takes an ID, which is just going to be an integer. It's just going to say, you know, the user or client requested this type of object. And so that will get decoded and it will return uh, not the particular, uh, a pointer to the particular concrete class. So it's not going to return a pointer to product one or product two. It'll return a pointer to the abstract class. So in this case down here in the actual implementation of create product, we see that if ID equals zero, we'll return a pointer to a new product one instance. However, that pointer is casted just as the abstract class as product. And likewise, if we get an ID uh, integer is equal to one, we'll go ahead and return a pointer to a new product two instance, again, casted as uh, the base class product. And then otherwise we return a null pointer. So down here uh, in the actual main function itself, you can think of this as our client. So from here, all we have to do is first create the product factory. Then we'll just create a pointer to the parent, uh, uh, the parent class or the abstract class product. And then from uh, the product factory, we don't need to worry about you know, how we call the constructor. We just simply request uh, from the factory a class of a particular type. And this uh, in, in this instance, it's just with uh, the integer uh, ID number of zero or one. So here we request uh, a product here using integer zero. And over here, we request one using the integer one as the ID. And again, that returns either product one or product two. And then we go ahead and call print product which will use the uh, concrete class implementation for this particular class. So over here, when we call create product with integer zero, that will go ahead and make a new product of uh, product one. And so product one will say hello from product one. And likewise, when we call it with the integer one instead of integer zero, it'll create a new concrete class product two, an instance of it, and it will call hello from product two, okay? So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll do G++ dash O factory factory.cpp. 
and we can go ahead and run this. And so we see that we get this common interface of just using the abstract type. We don't worry about the instantiation at all. That's handled by the uh, product class itself, uh, or the, rather the, uh, the factory class itself. Uh, and you know we've really decoupled those things. So you know if we consider, say, uh, you know the factory is part of like a separate library, and we want to say make an update uh, to that factory. Well, we don't need to recompile our code on the uh, uh, we don't need to recompile our code on the client side because the client side still sees the exact same interface of just this abstract class. So we've really decoupled things. Now, where do factories uh, like this really not work? Well, if we really need to cast um, those abstract classes to their uh, concrete classes a lot, well, this doesn't quite make as much sense because the real idea behind this is we're able to use um, the abstract class and we're able to have this unified interface. So if we're constantly having to cast things, maybe factory doesn't make as much sense. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can check out all the other code that we've looked at in all my other series, including on C++, GP programming with CUDA, and parallel programming with C++, and there's a, quite a few. Here we looked at object-oriented design patterns. We're on creational design, and we've got a lot more coming up. Here we looked at factory and just a basic factory implementation. We'll look at smarter implementations of factories later. So feel free to download this, play around with it, and as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.